What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Vitamin Lead, your healthy dose of leadership. I'm your host, TJ Reed, and I am so excited today to have with me Michelle Barry Franco. Michelle, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to have this conversation with you. Me too. So we've, we've shared a little bit of your bio, Michelle, with our listeners. And so uh, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Let's see. I, uh, I live in Northern California, just north of San Francisco. Um, drive over the Golden Gate Bridge with regularity. And to my three daughters, great delight. Every time we drive over it, I say, look up people travel from all over the world <laughs> yeah. to take this drive. And they're like, I'm looking, mama. So <laughs> that is one thing I've never done before. I, I hope yeah. to do it someday. I need to get out there. So yeah. Yeah. I hope you get to do it. It really, I mean, part of the reason I do that is because I'm gen. it is, it is majestic and yeah. it really is virtually every time. It's just a remarkable, beautiful sight. So I love, you know, I love where we get to live and I'm mama to three girls, as I said, preteen teenagers. So they are 12, 14 and almost 16. Wow. Yeah. So life's exciting. And that you must have a lot of patience. <laughs> It's funny. I think the, the for me around parenting, and probably some of it is the stylistic, you know, my daughter's personality styles. But for me, what stands out the most is how often I have no idea what the answer is. <laughs> like, you know, just things like, hey, mama, can I get a rook piercing? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, who should we ask? <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it's exciting. And, and I'm a speaking coach, as, as you probably already said. So I'm yeah. a speaking coach and I work with people all over the world and an executive coach, sort of the two weave together uh, in my work. Yeah. I have a great husband, a dog, two chickens. Oh, really? Two chickens? <laughs> we used to have six, so, but we live out in the country. Okay. That's awesome. When yeah. you think San Francisco, you don't think that unless it's no, like a full yeah. house episode or something. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. We actually, we live, it takes like, th we live just north of San Francisco on the way to Point Reyes National Seashore. It's beautiful. We're out in the country. They don't even deliver mail to our address. Oh, wow. That's yeah. awesome. I'm sure you enjoy that sometimes after speaking yeah. with people all the time. Love, love. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so you're a speaking coach. Uh, one of the things that was really interesting to me is you said that most public speaking advice makes things worse. Why, <laughs> why is that? <laughs> Did I say that? Um, because, yeah, I really believe that. And, um, and not all of it. But most public speaking advice that I see out there comes from the outside. You know, it, it focuses on external, external things. Mm. And it's exactly the wrong place to focus if you want to engage an audience. The most important thing that you do as a speaker is create trust and connection. And that really happens when, you, when you're internally present. Hmm. So all of those like ways that you're supposed to move and there's a lot, and people ask me these questions often when they you know, come to me. Well, I want to be really dynamic on stage and how should I, how do I move so that I engage the audience? And I really love kind of, uh, of course, honoring where that comes from. I know where it's coming from for them. But one of the things I hear out there in the speaking world that I would love to just annihilate is <laughs> that speaking is, uh, great speaking is a performance. Mm. And it's just not. It's the opposite of a performance. And by that, I mean, we're there to be real, to be ourselves. In fact, yeah. the more ourselves we are, the more we create that connection and trust. Yeah, I think, <clears throat> I think at least we're starting to see some of that hopefully being partially annihilated by people like Brene Brown and others yes. that are encouraging us to bring our best selves and bring our real authentic vulnerable selves to those places. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Have you seen her, um, her Netflix? You know, the, the thing I love, I talk about this a lot in trainings with companies. So you know how she comes out? She comes out in the beginning of the uh -huh. Netflix a show and she just walks out and stands there for, I don't even know how long it is, but I mean, people are practically crying and they start laughing because the crowd's going wild and it's, it's just a rival, but she's just looking at them. Like it's just yeah. such, it's a real sense of presence. And mm. I think that's part of what you're feeling in that, in that room. So I love that you brought her up. 
Do you, do you think that scares people? That's why they start laughing or stuff like that when somebody <laughs> actually brings presence instead of a performance? Yeah, that's interesting. I, uh, I don't think it scares people. I think it shocks them. I think it's mm. supr- maybe shocks is too strong for a lot, but for some, I think it surprises and delights them. And so I think what mm. we're seeing, so you can go watch that beginning again of her Netflix show. What we're seeing is people just kind of going like, oh man, wow. Like, look at that. Yeah, I think that's what they're, part of it is because everybody's going wild and she hasn't even done anything yet. <laughs> but I think part of it is just that presence. I love that idea, the, the, yeah. the presence instead of a performance. Yeah. 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 So let's say somebody feels they're supposed to be like a thought leader and a speaker. Uh, what should they think through to decide if they want to do it? If they say, uh, like, let's say somebody comes to you and says, hey, Michelle, I really want to be a speaker. I want to get up on stage and start speaking. Uh, what types of things do you walk them through to see if they're ready or should do something like that? Yeah, well, that happens almost every day. So sure. <laughs> <laughs> so that's good. I can answer this one. Um, you know, the, the, first of all, there's just a real honoring. I mean, I genuinely, I really believe and have seen over and over across the decades that some of us are called to, to use yeah. our voice and our experience and our stories to serve other people. And mm-hmm. it feels like a call. And so regardless of whether they yet have the expertise in the way that they want to, or in the area, you know, where they're hoping to be a thought leader, that, that is real. That sense that they're supposed to do this is real. And I really like to honor that and have a conversation about that, hmm. that, you know, th- yes, then you can do that. And then the path to getting there depends on what their experience is. So I usually start with, of course, a conversation around what do you want to say? And hmm. not from a like, you better have it all buttoned up so that it's clear to me, <laughs> you know, like right. I, I often will do what I call my rooftop message. I don't know if you remember. I read that in the book. <laughs> yeah. So I do this little exercise where I will say, you know, imagine you're, you're in this little town and the streets are full of people and they're struggling and they're all turning to each other and saying, what are we going to do? You know, this is, I'm so frustrated. I feel like I've tried everything. I'm tired of this. And you're standing among them and you're saying, you know, to yourself, I can have totally help these people. You try to tell some of them, but there's too much chaos. Hmm. So you see this building and there's a ladder up against that building and you walk over, you climb the ladder to a reasonably flat roof <laughs> and you cup your hands around your mouth and you say, listen to me, beautiful people. Here is what you need to know to make your lives better. Hmm. What would you say? And that, that opens up usually a conversation for people Uh, around, gosh, what would they, often people know, have an idea of what they would shout from a rooftop if they didn't have to say it perfectly, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So we usually start there and then kind of see what happens. Do do you believe that everybody can be a thought leader in their industry if they put in the time, effort, and kind of have that passionate, passionate message inside of them? Yes. I believe that thought leadership is a decision that we make. Hmm. Okay. At least initially. And so (laughs) it's a funny conversation because I don't know if you've seen any of the conversation out in the interwebs about thought leader as a term, but I've, I may have written some about it in the book. I'm not sure, but I've had, I've had people say to me over the years, marketing, you know, consultants or people on my team that I've been working with say, you don't want to use the word thought leader. You know, anybody who is an actual thought leader wouldn't call themselves a thought leader. So I did this video called why you should call yourself a thought leader. (laughs) I got a call from someone from a big name, uh, News, newspaper publication, a, a reporter who wanted to talk about this, you know, like, oh, you think people should actually call themselves a thought leader. And, you know, I think she was disappointed. So never actually wrote the article because, like, you know, I'm not like, don't walk around going, hello, nice to meet you. I'm a thought leader. Right. That's, you know, not. Not in your you LinkedIn do. tagline or something like that. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm a thought leader. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> but I do think it's a mindset. It's a way. And, and what it really means is that you've decided to share your very best ideas and stay at the leading edge of your best ideas and the ideas in your industry 
Hmm. but to share those best ideas in service of other people. And that is really what leadership looks like. Now, we all know that a leader without followers, is it a leader, you know? Right. But in my experience, when you really do work to get that kind of clarity and you consistently go out there, and there's a big filtering process around that consistently go out there thing. Sure. That, yeah, you can get to a place where you are providing real leadership. Yeah. Hmm. I like that. Yeah. I want to, I want to ask you, I, I read your book beyond applause and I loved it. It was like, I, I've always enjoyed speaking. And so, but I learned some things that I hadn't learned before. And one of my uh-huh. favorites was uh, the quote you said in there, you said, charisma is something people experience in others. Charisma is way less about you and way more about how you make others feel. And when I read that, I just, I put my phone down and I was like, oh, that's such a clarifying statement. And so Yay. I was just hoping you could maybe talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, that's so fun. It's so fun that that stood out for you. And it's just so true. I think the misunderstanding out in the world is that charisma is something you're only born with. I'm not saying that some people aren't born with, you know, natural tendencies that lead to a, a sense of warmth and power, which is really what you're experiencing, sense of connection and, and confidency kind of power. Yeah. And that's what gives that sense. But, you know, you can be all warmth and power, you know, by yourself or, you know, around things nobody cares about. And is that, that's not, it is about what other people feel around you. That's when the charisma gets transferred and experienced. Hmm. And that's just true about all thought leadership and speaking overall. That's where it matters. It's in the, in the difference that you make, in the feelings that you bring up in, in other people. So I guess that's kind of what I mean by it. What did you love about it? What, what did it bring for you as a speaker? Well, I, I just loved it because like, like what you said, I, I do have some natural leadership giftings. And so uh, I've had people say, well, you just, you were born with charisma. But the, I think what this says is it says that what you're bringing to the table is in service of other people. Yeah. It's not about like, being dynamic or anything like that, uh, or the, like the performance that you do, but it's really like the service that you give to other people that there's some sort of transformation happening, uh, in the, in the exchange of idea to their heart and their mind when you're talking to people. So. Yeah. I love that. See, that's why people experience you as so charismatic. That makes, that's what you've been just doing. And I think, I think that is maybe just like a key, (laughs) It, it, is, it's a, it is about charisma and yes, there is the confidence and there is the, you know, these qualities that you may have had from before, but most of the people, pretty much everyone that I know who has that kind of charisma works at it. And I, but I yeah. don't mean that in the way you might think it's, they don't go practice the way they're going to move on the stage. Right. Some of them do because they love the art of public speaking. And there is something fun about that, but that is so far down the line about what's important. Yeah. They, the, the primary thing to do is who is this audience? Who are these people you're about to serve? What will light up their hearts and minds? And how can I be present for that? Prepare initially for them and then be present for whatever shows up for them. That gets experienced as confidence and connection, which is charisma. Hmm. That's, that's, uh, that seems to be what's behind the idea. I heard you on a podcast recently talking about surrendered speaking yeah. and, uh, can, can you, I, I don't know that I would do it justice, but could you maybe define surrendered speaking and how you get to that point of surrendered speaking? From what I understand, it's like you have preparation, but then you get into the moment and you're there in the moment with the audience. Is that right? Yeah, you got it. So there it is. You just did it. Perfect justice. <laughs> I don't know what else I would say about it okay. because that, but, but that is, but I'll say a few things anyway. <laughs> okay, good, good. Cause I feel bad for taking that. I'm, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I mean, it is, it is about, it's about doing, there is a good amount of work that, that is done around great speaking. Mm. A lot of it though is about them. It's about, so there's the initial, you know, the reason I have the rooftop message, the reason that that idea ever came to me is because I was looking for a way for people to access the most real message that they have. Yeah. The thing they really want to say, and that matters, that's important, but it, 
it only matters insofar as it can help other people if you want to be a speaker or in thought leadership. So then the next question, and really the question you play in almost all the time, if you want to be in a position of thought leadership or serve as a thought leader, is what's going on for them? What are they struggling with? And, and I say that around surrendered speaking because we do a lot of prep. We still get intimately connected with our ideal audience member, with the people or the people we know we're going to serve if we've already got our audience set in front of us. And then we prep and we, we use best practices in speaking. A lot of it you've seen in Beyond Applause. And you know I have all these resources that are offered there. And by the way, anybody can get a free copy of Beyond Applause, a PDF version of Beyond Applause. Um, and we can give that link if you'd like. Yeah, absolutely. And, and then they can. So I'll say it now since we're already talking about it. It's at michelleverifranco.com forward slash free book. And then inside there, uh, there's, there's a link to the only presentation outline you'll ever need, which mm. I named. I named it that. <laughs> we That's call helpful. It, yeah. <laughs> we call it Tapoyan for short. <laughs> and, <laughs> the, and, and so, so I say that to say you do all this rich audience analysis. You use the only presentation outline you'll ever need or whatever process you like to use for crafting a talk. And, and you do your very best to prep. And then you show up hmm. and you, in many ways, if you've really, if you've really practiced and prepared well, this talk and this gift that you've created, it's going to live in you. So there's a trust phase, I call it, which is like right before you're about to go out there and hopefully at least for half a day or something before where you're not practicing and you're not in your head so much and you just show up and you've got this talk ready, yeah. but you, you let this dynamic moment serve them. The best way possible. Hmm. You, you, that's so good. Uh, you, you told a story about Steve Jobs doing this at the iPhone event. Would you mind sharing that story? I think that was a great story. So good. So if you look up, I'm sure you can find you know you can find the video online of Steve Jobs. Uh, it's the iPhone launch, 2007. And, and, you know, for so many things we could say about Steve Jobs, I, I didn't know him, never coached him, but right. in the speaking world, he is well known because he was one of our best business speakers of all time. And he looks effortless hmm. and he, he looks like he's just kind of like, he's just marveling, but he's mostly doing is marveling at his own products. Right. Hmm. Yeah. He was notorious for practicing and practicing and practicing lots of practice. So in this, in this, launch video or this launch speech and demo, you know, he's, he's doing that strolling kind of thing and he's scroll, scrolling and then all of a sudden the tech stops working. Uh, his video that's actually showing how this phone works. And, so, you know, this could be, this would be a moment that a lot of people would lose it because it feels like we need this tech to meet our goals. Yeah. And that we have to, you know, uh, great leadership is stewardship, right? So we're thinking, okay, we're in this moment. We had a goal, which was to show this on the screen, but we have a room full of people who are curious about a product, right? So you got to just move into this. So he just seamlessly moves into telling this story about when he and Wozniak were first, you know, um, I don't even remember the exact details of the story, but he's contorting his body into all these different shapes, keeping this audience engaged while the people in the back are frantically trying to fix the tech. And he even says, there's a bunch of people back there right now who are freaking out trying to you know, <laughs> work on this tech. But yeah, it just shows, I think, when you, when you come at your this leadership opportunity that is speaking, you're, you, that's what you have in mind is how can I serve? So you notice he also, he didn't just start telling some funny jokes, which is okay too, if that's all you got. That's also part of <laughs> surrendered speaking. But you could tell that he knows his audience well enough that he was able to quickly go into how else can I serve? And this mm. is a story they would really enjoy that's related. Yeah. Mm. So do, do, you, do you coach people for preparation when it doesn't go right? Uh, like coming into a speech like that when you're surrendered, it's like, if it doesn't go right, maybe you could go this way. <laughs> you know, we, we sometimes if I have a person who's particularly concerned about, or, or there's a real chance that, you know, that there's been, sometimes I have speakers who there's been an indication at the conference that they might have to move rooms, that tech may, mm. that the slides, the slide hardware, <laughs> what is it called? The projector, projector and screen. Yeah. 
<laughs> may not be available. And so we definitely do some sort of plan B kinds of things. And especially if they're feeling like they really, really need to. But a big part of my coaching with clients is really around, is, is just from a deeper place, which is, there's a lot of thoughts that can come to you that we can't plan for. A lot of events that might happen during a talk, anything can happen when you're speaking. That's what right. I say. It's all in how you handle it. And we can handle it when we have great access to the place in us that is always calm, that, mm. that always is a resource. And so my job, as I see it, aside from knowing best practices and helping people get, you know, find their own clarity, which lives within them around their messaging and their talk, is to keep pointing them to the place in them that is always resourced. Hmm. that will know the best thing to do for them in that moment, no matter what happens, so that they can maintain that sense of stewardship. Hmm. I guess the key then is to make sure that you keep resourcing that center of yourself so that you can go there. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> what are you thinking when you say that? I have ideas, but what are you thinking? Well, like, number one, I'm a, we talked about this before the podcast, but I'm a very extra in person, like, like going. But I'm, I'm finding more these days, especially maybe the older that I get, that mm -hmm. I need more time to stop and calm. And so I'm, I'm doing things like using a calm app and stuff. And I'm practicing that because I know that if I don't, I could breeze through a day and miss my, yeah. like how I'm feeling about things or being able to bring up more of a sensitivity to others if I'm not careful. Yeah. Yes. Great. That's... <laughs> That, I was kind of thinking that exactly. So whatever, whatever works, it could be that there's a practice that will help you stay connected. Hmm. And, and I love that. And I love the Calm app. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I also, you know, there's also just a, a, a pointing in that direction. Like you actually can access that. And I do love the Calm app and I love to do things that get me to that place. You don't even have to do anything. It's just there all the time. You just have to look. Hmm. So that's the cool thing too. Nobody ever told me that. That's like, that's like the last three years <laughs> hmm. wisdom for me that because I've done all kinds of practices. I've done EFT and thought work and meditation and I got there. They can all be lovely and I've had wonderful experiences with many of them. But what really surprised me was... <laughs> I really felt like when, I don't even remember exactly the moment that I heard it in this way, but it was like, great, do all those things if it helps you access that place in you. But by the way, that place in you is always there. You can always mm. just look at it too. If you don't have time for all the other stuff. <laughs> so, Because sometimes when you're in the heat of the moment and the tech's not working and you just go, okay. <laughs> I'm going to get there real quick. Yeah. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Can't whip out the call map. Got to get there. <laughs> exactly. But it can help to have been there recently. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, th thank you for sharing that advice uh, yeah. from from your from what you've learned because I think that'll definitely help. I'll, I'll definitely go there the next time that I'm thinking like that. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so I have one more question for you, and then I would love for you to once again mention where our folks can get the free book uh, from okay. you and anything else you'd like to mention. But um, last question that we always like to ask our guests is, what's your definition of healthy leadership? Vitamin lead is your healthy dose of leadership. And so what's your definition of healthy leadership? Yeah, I like this question a lot. Um, I think healthy leadership is about the leader as much as it is about the way that they're serving their audience. And it starts there really much like you were talking about earlier. I think that's exactly right, right? What do, how do we source ourselves as leaders, care for ourselves so that we can show up and serve the people who are looking to us to help lead them to, you know, the next, I don't know, the shared, the shared goal. I think also when I think about healthy leadership, and this is the thing that I think doesn't get talked about enough, and it's sort of where we were just going, but I think leaders are so overwhelmed with information and things they're supposed to do and complaints and, you know, the next, the next feedback system that they have to start using. And I don't think they're pointed enough to that calm place within them. I don't think we're pointed to that enough as leaders, thought leaders and leaders inside of organizations and everywhere in between, that, that we 
that is, we always have health. We have innate health, every single human being, regardless of external circumstances or the way it looks on the outside, has that place of health always accessible. Mm. Someone just has to tell us. <laughs> so I'm hoping they're hearing me right now. It's yeah. there. <laughs> hear it. If you haven't heard anything, hear that right now. That's right. Thank you. <laughs> yep. Well, Michelle, it has been a delight talking to you. Yeah. Uh, thank you for taking the time and joining us. And uh, hey, this we've had a coast-to-coast -coast conversation tonight. I'm in Virginia Beach, Virginia. You're in uh, near San Francisco, California. And so that's really cool that we get to do this. Oh, I love it. I lived in Charlottesville, Virginia. Oh, did you? Okay. And spent a lovely weekend, three-day weekend in Virginia Beach. What a great place to live. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. So I'm grateful as well. So why, why don't Thank you tell you. our audience how they can get in touch with you and uh, maybe once again, mention that free book and then we'll also make sure to put it in the show notes as well. So um, you can get the free book at michelleberryfranco.com forward slash free book. If you take off the free book part, you'll be at Michelle Barry Franco, <laughs> which is where you can <laughs> learn more about me. Was that the only thing I was supposed to tell you? So, or anything else, any, anywhere else you want to connect with people or anything? Uh, I think that's, that's a great, oh, well, I'm on social media. We can connect on Instagram. We can connect on any of the normal channels. Would love to connect there. Yeah. I've loved this conversation with you. So, so much fun. You have a I gift. have too. I, I've enjoyed it. Thank you for all that you bring to this. And uh, thank you again for Beyond Applause. It's, it's been helping me grow as a, as a leader and a speaker. So. Oh, that's fun. Thank you so much. All right. Well, uh, stay healthy leaders and we will talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.